So we've started recording and share the screen. Oh, what is going on here? Go away. Damn it. All right, maybe that. Okay, can you see my screen all right? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yes, okay, sir. good. I was just going to imagine you could and proceed anyway. So let's see, 210. Okay, so uh, Edmund Spencer lives uh, during the uh, Tudor uh, reign. Uh, he's especially associated with uh, Queen Elizabeth. He lived uh, 1552 to 1599, so almost the turn of the next century. And best known for the Fairy Queen, which is a, um, an allegory about uh, Queen Elizabeth and her era. Uh, celebrating the Tudor dynasty. So you'll find a lot of that going on during the Tudor dynasty. Um, the kind of censorship that they had was political in nature rather than, um, um, you know, like too much sex or too much strong language. It was just, you can't uh, attack the dear leader. Um, so he writes the uh, sonnet sequence, the Amoretti, Let's see what I've got about that. Amor is uh, the Latin word for love. I think eti looks like it means little to me. Little love poems. Amoretto is a representation of Cupid in art. Uh, so, by uh, this time, Cupid has, uh, uh oh, these look either too much or too little. This looks about right. Oh yeah, that's great. Oh, go away, go away. Let's see if that works. Nope. Okay, well, you know, Cupid, the little guy with the bow and arrow uh, who shoots you with his, uh... why am I having so much trouble with that? You see, you could click on a Google image and it would blow up the Google image. Now it takes you to a web page. Find that really annoying. Uh, so little baby wings, arrow, bow. If he shoots you with his arrow, you fall in love, or at least if he shoots you with his golden arrow, uh, if you get shot, if he shoots you with his leaden arrow, uh, you fall in anti-love. So you're looking for a way to get away um, which explains a lot about love. Um, the Greek word uh, for this god is eros, where we get the word erotic. And originally in uh, Hesiod, uh, love, eros is one of the firstborn gods, along with earth and heaven, uh, Gaia and Uranus and eros. Uh, most beautiful of the deathless gods, loosening the limbs and overpowering the wise counsels and plans of all men and all gods in their hearts. Uh, so love uh, makes your knees weak and makes you act like an idiot. Uh, some things never change. And over time, um, in Aphrodite too was born outside of the normal order of things. 
uh, from the genitalia of Renas, yeah. Um, and so over time, they wanted to bring love under the umbrella of the uh, Greek Olympic pantheon. And so they rewrote the story and made uh, Aphrodite the uh, daughter of Zeus and Cupid the son of Aphrodite. And that gives you some kind of, you can bribe him, you know, with a purple ball and he'll go make somebody fall in love for you. So he, uh, he's not under our control, but he is under the control of the gods in general. Um, so Eros Tyrannos, love the tyrant. Eros Urines, the, I don't think I said that right. Love the destroyer. Uh, these are ancient ideas that go back to Hesiod. Um, you know, 600 BC in Greece, and Spencer is writing uh, in that tradition. Also, another story he tells us uh, this uh, shepherd from Mount Helicon is that yeah, Mount Helicon. I think we should definitely see Mount Helicon. Get that helicon energy. So there we go. Not as soon as it, no, you know, Mount Everest. It's just a nice hill, basically. Um, and not good for much except occasionally passing over it with your sheep. It's not like you would uh, stay there all the time. Anyway, um, he said, tells this story about the Greek Adam and Eve, Prometheus, the uh, Titan, uh, creates um, Epimetheus. In some versions, he's his brother. Um, either way, he's the first guy, right? Uh, and gives him fire, uh, which is Zeus's bailiwick. He sneaks away with it instead of making a deal with Zeus. And Zeus decides to smite. And so he smites um, Prometheus by chaining him to a rock for 30,000 years. And the uh, buzzards peck out his liver every day and it regrows every night. Really grim stuff. But he does uh, in Hesiod's mind, something even worse to man, he creates woman. Uh, and so all the God, well, Hephaestus creates her. He actually molds her uh, because he's the creator, uh, creator one among the gods. And then all the gods and goddesses give her a gift. Pan means all, Doron means gifts. So it's very uh, um, symbolic. Uh, Hera gives her queenliness, Aphrodite, uh, Athena gives her uh, wit, smarts, so she's able to do really smart things. Uh, Aphrodite makes her uh, uh, an attractive lover, and so on. And uh, one day, um, Epimetheus, who has been warned by Prometheus, he was warned. You see something, uh, you know, something unusual, I don't know what it'll be, but it'll be a trick from the gods, don't accept it. He's sitting by his fire, and he sees this beautiful goddess of a woman walking across the field, and he immediately forgets everything Prometheus told him. Prometheus means forethought. Epimetheus means afterthought. Um, he forgets everything uh, Prometheus told him, and he starts talking to Pandora. Hey, wow, you sure are attractive. Uh, why don't you come sit by me? I've got a fire. And so humanity began. Uh, and of course, Pandora famously opened the jar of woes that later became a box. But originally it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a jar. So um, love conquers all of us is what Virgil means when he wrote Omnia Winket Amor. And this uh, sonnet sequence by uh, Spencer is going back to the very earliest uh, Greek um, tradition. Where is number one? That's not number one. Okay, I'm going to have to. Uh...
Uh, window. There we go. Okay, so um, you're probably starting to uh, remember that uh, leaves in this book, uh, case means leaves of a book. And happy ye leaves, the leaves of my book of poetry, when as those lily hands which hold my life in their dead doing might shall handle you and hold in love soft bands like captives trembling at the victor's sight. So he's finished his book. He's writing this forward to it and he's going to send it to her and she's going to read it. Um, and if only she had her hands all over me the way she has her hands all over the book. And happy lines on which was, and notice the quatrain is really obvious here. Uh, because every four lines uh, you have a hanging and dent, um, which is handy. Uh, so uh, stanza one, the book is happy. Stanza two, the lines are happy on which the starry light, those lamping eyes will deign sometime to look and read the sorrows of my dying sprite written with tears in hearts, close bleeding books. So I'm bleeding my heart all over this book with all my pain with which I love her. Uh, so we're starting off um, with him uh, in love. Uh, he's going to... Um, tell the story of their love in this sonnet sequence. Oh, happy rhymes bathed in that sacred brook of Helicon, which she derived it, when she derived it. So Helicon is where Hesiod did his writing as a poet, shepherd, farmer, and invented or at least recorded, first recorded the uh, story of Pandora. And she is Pandora's uh, daughter, the source of all his woes and joys. Uh, so for that one book, I mean, that one sonnet sequence uh, claimed to be original, and I'm coming up with something. I mean, this is much more in line with the Renaissance. I'm going to get a book, and then I'm going to write some stuff based on that book. Um, when ye behold that angel's blessed look, my soul's long like food, my heaven's bliss. Um, so the rhymes in this are happy. Uh, because um, they'll be looking at her. So she, in uh, stanza one, she's uh, picking up the book and opening it. Stanza two, she's looking at it. Stanza three, the book's looking back at her. It's kind of a creepy book. Uh, leaves, lines, rhymes, seek to please her alone. Whom, if you please, I care for other known none. Uh, let's do two. And then we'll move on to 24. Uh, unquiet thought, whom at the first I bred, a vinward bell of my love pined heart. And Southerns have with sighs and sorrows fed till greater than my womb thou waxen art. So uh, he's another pregnant dude, pregnant with uh, great poems for his girlfriend or the woman he wants to be his girlfriend. Break forth at least length out of the inner part in which thou lurkest like to viper's blood and seek some succor both to end my smart and also to sustain thyself with food. So he's hoping uh, this stuff will bring him some luck. Uh, but if in presence of that fairest fowl thou chance to come fall lowly at her feet with meek humbleness and afflicted mood, pardon for thee and grace for me entreat. So uh, be as pitiful as you can so she'll feel sorry for me and we'll uh, have pity sex with me. Uh, I don't know how well that worked. Um, I don't see it working much today. Um, which if she grant, then live, and my love cherish. If not, die soon, and I will with thee perish. So uh, his poems, he hopes, will win her over, or they're both going to die. OK, so it looks like he starts this in the middle. I'm already in love with her. We don't get the story of the first look, you know, like we did with the uh, previous sonic sequence. All right, 24. When I behold that beauty's wonderment and rare perfection of each goodly part of nature's skill, the only compliment I honor and admire the maker's art. Um, so she's so beautiful, uh, she doesn't need makeup and hairspray and all the other stuff. 
Uh, but when I feel the bitter baleful smart with her fair eyes unawares to work in me, that death out of their shiny beams do dart, I think I a new Pandora see. So yes, the source of all his joy, stanza one, and misery, stanza two. And there's this idea that uh, rather than light coming to our eyes, our eyes shoot out beams to see stuff. Uh, kind of like Superman, except uh, he, it doesn't blow shit up. <clears throat> Whom all the gods, remember all the gods gave her something. All the gods in council did agree into the sinful world from heaven descend. That she to wicked men a scourge should be, but all their faults with which they did offend. So women were sent to be a punishment to men. Um, you can tell men do the writing, can't you? Because <laughs> um, the world was sinful before she ever got there. Who was doing the sinning? Huh? Must have been the dude, because uh, it wasn't the dude that. But since she, um, my scourge, I will entreat that for my faults, you will me gently be. Oh. Well, let's see, 54. Uh, that leaves off at 30. I gotta employ my uh, Roman numeral de decoder ring. Uh, L I V. Does that sound right? L is fifty. I V is five minus one is four. Okay. Stands for the first of this world's theater in which we stay. Remember, this is the time of Shakespeare and his competitors. And the theater is popular place for people to go. And Shakespeare calls, uh, you remember all the world's a stage. So this is a common idea. Uh, so the world is a theater in which we stay. My love, like the spectator idly sits, beholding me that all the pageants play disguising diversely my troubled wits. So I'm up here trying to show out for her and she's just kind of sitting over there watching. Uh, sometimes I joy when glad occasion fits and mask and mirth like to a comedy. So I can act like I'm happy. Soon after, when my joy to sorrow flits, I well and make my woes a tragedy. So he's back to being pathetic again. Uh, did, did, yet she beholding me with constant eye delights not in my mirth nor ruse my smart. This is a very common thing. So when I'm up there making jokes, she doesn't laugh. When I'm miserable, she doesn't cry. Um, but when I laugh, she mocks. And when I cry, she laughs and hardens evermore her heart. What can move her if not mirth or moan? She is no woman, but senseless stone. Oh my goodness. Oh, dude, maybe she's just not that into you. Uh, what did you ever think of that? Okay, that's 60, and we need 64. But not there. Am I right? Is it alert? Um, does that look right? LX5060 IV4. Okay, I think it's right. Coming to kiss her lips, such grace I found. Ah, finally, uh, poem 64 out of 90. We're over two thirds of the way through, and he's worked himself up to a kiss. Meseemed I smell a garden of sweet flowers that dainty odors from them threw around for damsels fit to deck their lovers' bowers. Okay, so I kissed her and a um, miracle of miracles in the Renaissance, uh, she had good breath. I imagine living in a, a place where people not only never bathe, but they never brush their teeth. Uh, is that a tic tac? <laughs> Um, but here's a miracle. Her, her breath actually smells good. 
Her lips too, they smell like gilly flowers. Her ruddy cheeks liken to roses red. I think those are supposed to look like roses, but smelling like roses is good too. Her snowy brows like budded bellamores, her lovely eyes like pinks, but newly spread. Okay, so uh, basically she felt, smells like flowers. Uh, maybe it's really good perfume. Her goodly bosom like a strawberry bed. Oh, he was near her bosom. Her neck like to a bunch of columbines. Her breasts like lilies ere their leaves be shed. Her nipples like young blossomed jasmines. So yeah, they've got their clothes off. Now we're getting somewhere. And all he can talk about is flowers. So fragrant flowers do not over smell, but her sweet odor did them all excel. Well, you can see why um, Shakespeare would get kind of snarky with this when he writes his poems, because it gets old really fast. Um, I kind of liked it better when he was rolling around on the ground crying. Uh, okay, L-X-V-I-I, -I. I think that's it. Okay, here we've got another uh, thing we've seen before. He's the hunter, uh, she's the uh, prey. Like a huntsman after weary chase, seeing the game from him escaped away, sits down to rest him in some shady place with panting hounds beguiled of their prey. And so uh, she's gotten away from him. Uh, he's sitting down to rest. So after long pursuit in vain, I say, when I, all weary, had the chase for so the gentle deer returned the self same way, thinking to quench her thirst at the next brook. So the deer comes back. In this case, the uh, woman that's been running away from him has returned. Uh, sh there she be holding me with milder looks, sought not to fly, but fearless still did bride, till I in hand had yet half trembling took, and with her own goodwill, here firmly tied. So I'm hoping he's uh, not planning to make a chair out of her hide the way they do with uh, deer skin. Uh, this is one of those uh, images you don't want to push too far, right? Uh, strange thing me seem to see a beast so wild, so goodly one with her own will beguiled. So if she wants to be with him, she'll be with him. Uh, that's a, it took him 50, 60, five, six, 67, um, sonnets to realize that. <laughs> 75, we need a V. Here we go. Ah, this is his most famous sonnet from the sequence. One day I wrote her name upon the strand, which is of course uh, the, um, the sand. But came the waves and washed it away, and I wrote it again with the second hand, but came the tide and make my pains its prey. So there at the beach, she's writing her name on the beach, and it keeps washing away. Vain man, said she, that dost in vain is say, a mortal thing, so to immortalize. So uh, you're vain to think you can make me immortal by writing my name in the sand, for I myself shall like to this decay, and eke my name be wiped out likewise. So. Uh, I will die, my name will die. Memento mori, tempus fugit, right? Not so, quote I, let baser things devise to lie in dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse, your virtues rare, shall eternize, and in the heavens write your glorious name, where when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live and later life renew. So he's going to write about all of her virtues, like how good she smells. That's kind of it. Um, and then her name will live after he dies, except of course, he forgets to put her name in here. Let's see if we can find who they're about. Ah, Elizabeth Ball. So her name does live. And Ball rhymes with a ton of shit. It's not like Elizabeth Orange. Uh, you can ball, you can oil, you can twirl, you can maul. I mean, probably won't want to do that, but you can do a lot of stuff. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh.
See if there's a picture of her. Oh, there she is. Looking very Elizabethan. Um, so eventually they do marry. Now, traditionally, you would not put her name in the printed sonnet sequence, but you would put something that would scan with it. So Elizabeth or Beth. You could just call her Beth. I'm going to call you Beth. And then uh, I can come up with... Um, um, now call the woman in the uh, poems Tess, and then uh, that rhymes, well, no, it doesn't rhyme with Beth. Does any name rhyme with Beth? Seth. <laughs> but that's a dude name usually. Uh, but uh, you would put Seth in the uh, poem, and then Beth, you would say when you were reading it to her. You don't even do that. You know, her name's not in here at all. So there. Um, immortalize that. Uh, 79, that's 80, 50, 60, 79. Men do call you fair and you do credit it for that yourself you daily such do see. But the fair mind, the true fair, that is the gentle wit and virtuous mind is much more prayed of me. So um, as the sequence goes on, he falls uh, less in love with her looks and more in love in her body and more in love with her mind. Um, for all the rest, however fair it be, shall turn to naught and lose that glorious view. But only that is permanent and free from fell corruption that the flesh ensues. So your virtues can last through your lifetime. Your looks will be gone. I mean, it wasn't so long ago I was sitting where you are uh, looking very much like you do. And now I'm old and fat and bald. Uh, and death is coming soon. Um, so that's the memento mori. Um, so your, your flesh is going to decay uh, over time. You're not going to look like you do now, but I still love you because you'll have that inner beauty, the true beauty um, that doth argue you to be divine and born of heavenly seed. So back to Pandora from the gods, derived from that fair spirit from whom all true and perfect beauty did at first proceed. So again, Pandora. He only fair in what he fair hath made and other fair like flowers untimely fade. Maybe he means the Christian God there, but he's been all about the Greek gods till now. All right. Uh, okay, so any questions about Spencer and the Amoretti? All right, well, I'm going to, any questions? Uh, well, let's stop sharing. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Um, we, uh, the next reading, like what all do we have to read? Cause it doesn't say. Oh, let's check it out. Oh, Dr. Faustus, the play. Yes, it's, a, it's not that long a play, but it's a full play. Um, does this still work? I can literally feel my hair growing and I don't have much hair. We're waiting on archive.org. Oh, I think it popped. Nope. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, just. Oh, here we go. Um, here are the various scenes. Just when you finish one, click on the next. I would read the notes first, then uh the play then go back over the notes oh and there's some notes and we aren't reading passionate shepherd or nymph this time just the just faustus you can probably find it online like the play Oh, here we go. Performed by Oxford Theatre Guild, yeah. 
I wonder if it's any good. They could use some lights. Okay. Yeah, you could watch that if you uh, want to see the play. We aren't going to do that in class. I kind of stopped showing movies when everybody would either fall asleep or sneak out. <laughs> it was just me and like two people still awake at the end. We were sitting at the front and didn't realize that everybody was sneaking out. Any more questions? All right. Well, let me stop sharing, stop recording.